So hi everyone. So today I will explain about chapter two, which is statically determined plan trust. Okay. So what is a trust? So a trust is a structure that composed of slender members joined together at their end points. So the members commonly used in the construction consist of the wooden struts, metal bars, angles or channels. So the joint connections are usually formed by bolting or welding the ends of the members to a common plate called a gusset plate or by simply passing a large bolt or pin through each of the members. So trusses are commonly used for the rooftop, the roof truss, okay? So you can see that this is a, a truss structure, a tower, okay? So you can see that this is a gusset plate where you how you join how you join okay how you join the joint okay so you can see this example so the truss okay is either plane or planar truss okay 2d or either 3d truss composed of members that are lie in the same plane and frequently used for bridge on and roof supports okay so this one i have explained in the previous chapter you can refer to that for the theory so lot that cause the entire truss to bend are converted into tensile and compressive forces in member so in this chapter we will learn to calculate the tensile and compressive forces in the member okay so you can see that okay so lot cause bending of truss which develop compression on top okay members and tension in the bottom member so this chapter later we will calculate by using the joint method section method and alternative method to calculate to calculate the forces either compression or tensions that can determine from the calculations for each of the members okay so the common type of trusses you can see that the roof truss of okay, this is example number 1 roof truss okay this is the roof and you have top cord here you have the knee blazing here okay to give the supports here okay and then the bottom cords here and then the gusset plates to join the joint okay and then you have pulleys here okay you have the pulleys here because you have uh, this plain truss and then you have many of it then you will uh, pull it together with pulleys okay you will join it together and then you have this white span with an um, in between 30 to 30 meter typical and then you have the bar okay each one it, it, the bay okay five to six meter a uh, meter typically okay so roof truss is often used as part of an industrial building frame so the roof load is transmit transmitted to the truss at the joint by means of a series of pulleys okay so the roof will, uh, will distribute to the pulleys and then to the truss. So roof trusses are supported either by columns of wood, steel or reinforced concrete. Okay, or by the masonry wall. So the loading from the roof truss will be transferred to these listed uh, mentioned columns. Okay, so the roof trusses are along with its supporting columns is called as a bent. So to keep the band rigid and capable of resisting horizontal wind force, knee braces are sometimes used at the supporting columns that shows in the previous slide we have the knee braces to give extra support. Okay, and then the space between adjacent bands is called as a bay. Okay, so in, in between the uh, the bands, okay, this is a bay. So five to six meter just now the example and base are often tied together using a diagonal blazing in order to maintain rigidity of the stru uh, structure. So trusses used to support roof are selected on the basis of the span, slope and the roof materials. So we need to determine this okay, in the design but it's not in this uh, subject. This is subject is based uh, more on the analysis. Okay, so these are few types of the roof trusses. The common one you have the this hull truss and then the prep truss. Okay, for the 18 to 30 meter, 18 to 30 meter span. Okay, and then you have uh, this uh, flat roof hull truss and then warren truss for the flat roof. And then you have skylight, you have uh, fin truss, you have three hinge arc truss, and so on. There are many types of it. You can you can uh, explore more by yourself. Okay, so another type of the truss, okay, you can see that this is number two, is the brief truss. Also for bridge, we use a lot of the truss system, 
okay so you can see that this is the beans uh, th this is the floor beams okay and then this is the panels this is the bottom cord okay and then this is the top cord and then this is the string string gears, the portal end the portal bracing okay the top lateral bracing you have bracings here to support it and then the sway bracing to prevent sway and then the deck also okay you will put it on uh, a deck on it okay for the surface so the load on the deck is first transmitted to stringers then to the floor beams okay and then finally to the joint of the two supported side trusses so you can imagine the load are uh, the loadings from the vehicles okay or either the pedestrian on the uh, the bridge okay from the deck will transfer to the stringers and then to the floor beams okay and finally to the joints in between the support at both sides of the truss okay so the top and bottom cord of these side trusses are connected by top and bottom lateral bracing which serve to resist the lateral forces caused by wind and also the side sways caused by moving vehicles on the bridge additional stability is provided by the portal and the sway bracing okay so you can see that these are seven types of the bridge truss you can see that well, not type number one number two number three number four number five number six and number seven okay so what is the assum assumption in these so, to design both the members and the connections of a truss, it is necessary to determine the force developed in each member when the truss is subjected to a given loading. Okay. So, to do the analysis, we need to have assumptions to ease the uh, and easier and smoother calculation for it. So, the members are joined together by smooth pin. So, we assume all the members joined by a smooth pin and all loadings are applied at the joint okay which is at the joint you will not at the middle of the members okay and then the members weight are negligible and then because of these two assumptions is trust each trust members act as an axial forces axial force member and therefore the forces acting at the ends of the members must be direct along the axis of the member so if the force force tend to elongate the members so it is a tensile force okay t tensile force means it elongate okay and then if the force is shortened means the member is being compressed so it is under the compressive force c okay remember the tension and the compression t and c okay you can see this picture for the assumptions for the design okay where you can see that the force the tensile force is being applied to pull the bar towards outside so what happened is the internal forces to so in order to keep it in the shapes so they will have an internal forces that opposite the direction of the force so when you throw the internal forces it will become like this for the tension so it is positive okay so for the compression you will have the force that are compressed on the member okay so this where the member will have a force to push it okay to the opposite direction to push it back okay so where the force is in negative when you do the calculation so when you draw the internal forces it will have the direction of this okay so this is the forces applied on it okay forces applied and then this is the internal internal forces okay internal forces that occur to make it stay in the same shapes Okay, so the stability, let's go to the stability and determinacy. So the structure, uh, the structure mechanics involve determination of unknown forces on the structure. So some of this structure can be completely analyzed by using the equations of equilibrium. We need to have the uh, equilibrium equations, okay, where we commonly use the fx, fy, and mz equal to zero. fx is the horizontal forces, my is, fy is the vertical forces and mz is the total moment okay so all this must be in zero so we will use this to calculate the support reaction so if there is extra redundant reaction components then the structure is said to be statically indeterminate okay 
So we have a uh, type of structure which is statically determinate and statically indeterminate. Okay, so to be in a state of static equilibrium, a structure must meet the requirements of stability. So a statically indeterminate structure is a structure that has more unknown forces. Okay, so for the uh, three equilibriums, normally we have three unknown forces. But if you have four, means it will have one extra one. Okay. So how you calculate, how you determine the stability and determinacy, where we use this equation that explained also in the previous chapter. Okay, so determinacy, you can use this equation m plus r equal to 2j, when it's equal to 2j, okay, then it is statically determinate. If it is less than 2j, okay, the, okay, m is the member, r is the reactions, j is the joint. So when you put in the equations, when it's equal to 2j, then it's statically and determinate. When it is less than 2j, okay, it is unstable and it will collapse since there will be insufficient member of bar or reactions to constrain all the joints. And then when it is more than 2j, okay, means you'll have extra uh, members, it is statically indeterminate. So to calculate this, uh, you will have another method which is in the chapter 4, you will learn to calculate it. Okay, so next we go to the example number 1. So determine the numbers of redundant and step of the determinacy criteria for the trust as shown below okay so you need to calculate first you need to calculate the members okay okay so how many members we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten you have ten members and then reaction support you have roller support here one reaction force two reaction force three reaction force okay so you have three reaction force how many joint you have you have you have okay you have joint you have let me change the color of the 10 okay you have one joint two three four five six okay so you have six joint so m plus r m plus r 10 plus 3 equal to 2 times 6 so 13 equal to 12 it is not right it is greater than so <clears throat> this member is statically indeterminate with one degree of determinacy because it's extra one so it is with one degree of determinacy okay so let's go to example number two. Determine the member of redundant and state the determinacy criteria for the trust below. So whatever you do the analysis first, before you calculate the region force, first step you must get the determinacy. Okay? So member, how many you have? So again, you calculate again. So let me change the color. Okay, so you have one, two, or two, white. Right. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So you have 11 members, 3 reaction force, 3 reaction support. Join you have 1, join you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 join. Okay, so 11 plus 3 is equal to 7 times 2 so 14 is equal to 14 mean your member is statically and determinate okay okay so this is example number 3 okay so determine define whether the trust is statically determinate or statically indeterminate Okay, so now again, we calculate the member. You have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. You have 7 members, 3 reaction support. Okay, you have 1 support, 2 support, 3 support. All are roller support. Okay, and then join. Okay, you have how many joints here? You have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You have 5 joints. Okay, 7 plus 3 is equal to 2 times 5. 10 is equal to 10. Okay, it is statically determinate based on these equations. However, 
you can see that this table is unstable okay this is unstable why because the support reactions are parallel mean all are support towards the vertical there is no support on the vertical horizontal so there is nothing to con to constrain from the vertical uh, horizontal so when any force applied okay then let's say there is a force applied from here so this truss is going to be sway away to the left so it will become unstable so also cannot okay